pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So well, let's introduce ourselves, starting with the first Brian over there. Brian Wapham. Brian Warburton. I'm Chairman Jones. Mike Bluff. Uh, Land Hillis District Representative. David Maurer. Stephen LeBranch. And we also have with us Barbara Kravitz, our Recording Secretary, and the Wizards from the SAU 90 Hampton School District, uh, Superintendent uh, Kathleen and Business Manager Nathan. Right. We're very personal here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a, on here a training review because I had a couple of questions uh, that were delivered to me offline, and I believe I answered them. But it did, uh, I did want to uh, raise the possibility that maybe the members want to review any particular uh, item that we did our training on earlier this year. I'll remind you that our, the videos are all online and available on our website as well, hampton.com. So is there any uh, desire on any member to review any portion of the training? Great. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, go ahead, Dave. Sorry. I do remember somebody calling me up back in April mm -hmm. and saying, because I had mentioned I'd like to go to a class with other people, and this particular person told me he was setting up a class because they had talked to a couple of them as people and get back to me. Haven't had a word since. Are you referring to me? You got it. Oh, I don't. I don't remember making such a promise. Sorry. You did. No. Oh. Um, the if I was, I was. I was making reference to the fact that we were going to have our own training, in in our own budget committee meeting, which we did have in May. I know. Okay. So but this was us getting together on a Saturday, which I had brought up in the meeting, and some people said they couldn't make it and wouldn't do it. So this way, when you're watching these videos, which I've watched some of them, after a while they get kind of, kind of hard to look at it, and it's uh -huh. kind of, you know. You know, if I fall asleep, you wipe, wipe yourself in the face or something. It helps. But seriously, <clears throat> if you have it with other people, there were a number of questions I wanted to ask at the time, but I, there's nobody to talk to. I like teachers or I like another people, even being ourselves, so we can learn from each other. My interpretation might be wrong. It might be halfway right or this and that and the different responses. So I still think it's a good idea to do, and I'd still like to do it. Uh, as, a, as a committee of the whole? As, as a group of whoever wants to join. And I think it was going to be you, me, and two other people at the time. There were going to be four of us that said, yes, we'll do it. Okay. I think it would be a good learning way to get more out of it, is my point. Okay. And this is you proposing to be a non-meeting kind of thing, right? That is it was proposed, and that's right. what you told me we were going to have. Is there anyone uh, objecting to getting together for that purpose that was stated by Dave Moore? Uh, is there any particular content that you want <coughs> in this training? Well, we were going to go through all the, uh, we were going to go all through the videos together. That's what we were talking about. You mean the then videos? Then, as we were doing it, if somebody had a question, we could stalk and ask our fellow people who were in there with me them how they interpret this and how they interpreted that. The videos. Well, this is there to do it. You can watch it on that big screen there, and we can sit around and and it's a place you can stop it, and then we can get the answers to questions. I think the videos you're referring to are the videos from the training that Andrew made delivered to the budget committee in the years of uh, 20, yeah, you, you 20 mailed them all 2015 and 2016. Yeah, you so mailed them all to us. Right. Right. So you're talking about um, basically, I think there's something on the order of three to four hours of video. Yeah, exactly. You want a meeting with three to four hours of video interrupted no. by conversation? No, I don't want it in a row. We, we, we can work with whatever works best for people. You might do two hours one set, you do the following two hours the next set. But yes, you would be able to, if you wanted to, stop it and ask questions, get into it. Anybody else? It's a good learning experience. That's my only point. And an example, Brian over here, he has been an ex selectman, so heavily involved, and would understand the things that I wouldn't even know enough to ask, or if I did ask him, it'd be help to guide me through the process. But just to listen to one of the fellows who was my, the lawyers we had there represented and whatever the various people were, it's <clears throat> it's a little difficult in grasping everything. Mm -hmm. Anybody Anybody does it make sense at all? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And 
it's funny because in other towns and cities they do that because they're like you said there are questions that come up that maybe we weren't even thinking of so I may have a question that Dave may know the answer to I mean, all the snippets were well done I mean we, we all got them and I've reviewed them but I think if we all sat together in an informal setting and said gee let's dig down on this a little more it might be helpful yeah I have no problem with it as long as it's voluntary right <laughs> that's a polite no <laughs> I was able to figure that one out big guy <laughs> it's all right if it, if it works and if it doesn't work it's not all right I well, got that yeah but yeah. what's your opinion well, <laughs> we can do it if the majority was so I'm willing to Steve? sit in I'm not interested in that thank you very much Mr. Lapham I'm in I'm in total agreement with the whole thing. Okay, so we want to schedule a meeting on Saturday in this room. Is that what I'm hearing? We could do that on a Saturday. We just pick up a Saturday that we all can make it work. Get, check your calendars, but answer that would be yes. The first Saturday we're all available to do it. Whatever the number is, three, four, five people. Uh -huh. If you want to come, you come. If you don't, it, it's just voluntary. Yeah, which it should be. <laughs> I agree. With that. You want a quick study? Yeah. <laughs> Should we get back by the chairman by email and giving you all of us talk about which Saturdays we can make? I suppose that's a reasonable way of trying to coordinate the Saturdays. Um, you have a preference for afternoon or morning? I think the morning would be. You got it. You yeah, got it. Morning would be better. <coughs> you know, that's well, well, fine. Yeah. Okay. I'd say something like nine o'clock. Perfect. Two hours, and then you got to stop and you stop and how it went. So you can at, at the end of the first meeting say, was this worthwhile or not? Absolutely. And if it was, we go forward. If there isn't, we yeah. we stop it. Right. I don't know what the feasibility is because uh, this building is closed on Saturday, yeah. and I don't have a key. You know, it does have a key that's on this body. It would be Regina. Well, couldn't we look at it? Getting, getting someone with a key to get up in the morning on Saturday and open the door and stay around long enough to close the door? Maybe they could give you the key. No, they couldn't do that. It's you can't the get the key to the kingdom? No, it's against <laughs> the policy. <laughs> I'm sure we can figure it out, but I wouldn't try to do it now, but we could do it. Okay. So you want to do the entire meeting of 2015 video as well as the entire meeting of 2016 video over a course of n number of Saturdays, right? You see how it goes. You can do every other Saturday, mm -hmm. as an example. You can do it once a month, as an example. Well, I think that's a little. So what? Why don't we have one and then see how it goes? That's what we just said. I think that's what Dave was. Oh, all right. Referring to. Okay. It might be a failure. I hope it's not. But nothing. I'm going to try it. All right. Anything else on that? We'll move on. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> NHMA is on here because, as you know, we've got uh, issues with the uh, protocol that the Board of Selectmen is maintaining relative to our access to NHMA. Um, and it's not just limited to, you know, legal questions either. I might add uh, contacting them for any reason including attending seminars seems to be a question. So um, among other issues, uh, Regina has told me that she is working it in, in the background and I, I prefer it being resolved in a, in a quiet fashion if possible. So I want to afford her the opportunity to do that. And uh, as you know, she's in a uh, conference, uh, I think for water quality in New England for- Well, doesn't she, if people have something to look, deliver to the next meeting, give you an update on the status of whatever that particular item is? Well, she she would have if she were here tonight, but she's she not here tonight. I know because she's, she's not here tonight. She should have given it to you before she left to give you an update on the status of it. Is my statement. Well, I gave you what. Because if she's not at the next meeting, in the next meeting, you know, let for example, something got she got ill or something. How do we go about getting an answer to that question? And well, I think I it's did. an important question because of the fact that we need legal advice and we seem to be the only city or town, whatever, in the state of New Hampshire that are uh, being held back from 
getting a hold of this council advice rather than going through the selectmen who basically say no. Which, which the one of the new selectmen, uh, Mayor Louise, was told no a number of times while she was the uh, budget committee chairperson. Well, as I said, I did I did uh, talk to Regina, and that's that's the status update I got from her, and uh, uh, was expected that I would share with the body, which I am doing. Um, I acknowledge uh, what you say. There is still a problem on the table that needs to get resolved. I'm trying to resolve it in an amicable way as much as possible off camera, um, and and Regina has not given up working on the issue, and I want to give her as much time to do it as possible. Brian, can I ask you a um, question on this? Go ahead. You're a selectman. Mm -hmm. How long would it take to answer my question? Well, that's a good segue. As my old radio days, about five minutes, and, and I'm just going to comment on this, and, and I respectfully say that we've got the great school district in tonight, which I'm so proud of, so I'm not going to make this long, but I, I'm going to let the public know a few things again. Mr. Morris point three years ago in our deliberate session retired Captain Dave Lang put a warrant article to do away with the monies for NHMA it was defeated and some people would say well eighteen thousand dollars what does that mean well I think it means a lot because what we're doing we're saying to the public here's eighteen thousand dollars that we want you to vote for but nobody has access to calling anybody we all sat here July 31st at 7.46 at night because I took great, great notes and watched the replay of that meeting. I, since that meeting, have communicated with former Selectman Chairman and former longtime Budget Committee Chairman Ginny Brido, who absolutely agree with me. Back in the 90s and into 2000s, we never had this issue. If the Chairman of the School Board, Mr. Pluff remembers, Chairman of the Budget Committee, Chairman of the Selectman wanted to call, there was no issue. The, here's the issue I have, Mr. Chairman, and I think I alluded to you earlier this evening. We have, this issue has been going on prior to me coming back into public service. I've watched these meetings for the last two and a half years and longer, and we, all we hear is we're going to look into it. It is absolutely important to me, and whether I like a person or not, the current chairman of the Board of Selectmen is the only person who can talk to NHMA that is absolutely wrong and now we're being told let's wait until October and I'm not blaming you on that but let's wait till October when in fact the budget season has already started so Dave Moore and myself and other members of this great committee cannot pick up the phone for legal advice or other advice from NHMA because we're told we can't I checked into other communities Mr. Mara and you were that were at that seminar and you were absolutely correct for the people watching at home, Hampton is the only community in the state where a rule has been set down that only one person can talk to NHMA. Well, I can tell you, this budget committee member, if this continues in March, we will have a warrant article and I will get the signatures and I will also get the support. We will take NHMA out of the budget. If not, add it to the selectmen's budget because they're the only one that can speak. That's my issue with it. And as I said to the chairman a couple times, if everyone here says, okay, Brian, we have millions of dollars of budget, let's move on, so be it. And, and then we'll end it. But I think the public needs to understand for one board to tie people's hands to not calling, um, and the school board can't call either. So this is a problem. They're calling to get advice. Right, that's all we're doing. And just so that you know, the average amount of calls when I was on the Board of Selectmen that we made, and Mike, Mr. Pluff can allude to this, in any given year, sent it around three, four calls, maybe. That's the issue. And the silence I hear from members on this committee concerns me because it's almost like if you're silent, you're for the existing conditions. I watch all the precinct meetings, school board meetings, all the boards in town. We've got a lot going on. And granted, the selectmen have a lot going on. This is an important issue. This is taxpayer money. So the question is, do we want to continue down this road of keeping status quo? Because I, I, I got to tell you, when we get into November, we're not going to have time for this stuff. And by then, we're not going to be able to have the questions ready to be called. And then we go to the budget meetings, and we go to deliberate session, and we say to the public, this is why we need to do this. And we've got a lot of expenses in this town. So I hear what you're saying. I do believe 
whoever the selectman is at the time of, of they're on the board, Mr. Maher is absolutely correct. There is no reason, seven weeks ago we sat in this room, and the exact words from our selectman's rep were, quote, I will check with the chairman. I've got no response. You've got no response. To me, it's a five-minute response, and that's all we're saying. So that's, that's all I want to say on tonight, and I, I just think it's another example of only acting on things that the Board of Selectmen want to act on and don't want to get involved. Nothing to do with offline and do it am amicably. This is an easy decision. This is access to information on the New Hampshire Municipal Station, which everyone elected board in this town up until three years ago had access to. So. Thank you. Mr. LeBranch. Mr. Chair, could I ask a question to the superintendent? If it's on the topic of NHMA, yes. Are you not allowed, or first of all, what Brian uh, Warburton just said, you're not allowed to call New Hampshire Municipal Association? Is that a correct statement? Not really. Okay, that's um, why I'm asking you. Our school board you. is a member of the New Hampshire School Board Association, and by therefore being members, have access to the legal opinions that are provided through okay. that organization. So, so you're there's comfortable no reason for us to call. The I just Minnesota wanted to make that point right. that that you are you have your own that's legal. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. I wanted to clarify that because I didn't want that hanging out there, people f having uh, misinformation, okay? Thank so you, Ms. LeBranch. Well, that's great. That even, made, it's my case even minute, more. Go ahead. Minute, minute. You, you made reference to David thank Lane's you. motion at the Lutter session mm -hmm. uh, in 2014. Four years, okay, I said three. Three, three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> to be precise. Yes. <laughs> Um, the motion did succeed overwhelmingly at delivery session. Right, it didn't pass though. That's what I'm saying. It, it, the the budget itself failed. That's correct. As a whole. That's correct. Um, and so I just want the public not to be confused on that. Yep. Um, also, I, I want to get further clarification from the superintendent. Um, you are paying a separate dues to NHMA. How much is that? Do you know. That's correct. We pay a separate dues. To the New Hampshire School Boards Association, not to, not to the New Hampshire Municipal Association. No. So you have no access to the New Hampshire we, Municipal none. Association. We, we, all of our, any of our guidance, any of our advi legal advice is all done through the New Hampshire School Board Association, and our school board members are free to call them and seek advice as they see fit. Uh, they also, you know, uh, help us in the office in terms of uh, legislative policies and guidance. Sure, yeah, that. same so function as NHMA, right. basically. But Do you know roughly, Nathan, what their dues is? Be happy to hear that number later we'll on. We'll have it. $4,300? Okay. Forty-three. Yeah. We're paying over 17000 yes. for NHMA dues. I'm a little confused right here. Are they two separate organizations? Yeah, yes. they're, they're referring to mm -hmm. um, the lobbying group called the Hampshire School Board Association. That's correct. Right. So, so this one we're talking answer, about the is the question. I thought when you answered Steve's question, it was the same organization. No. You no. clarified it, and it's now a separate organization. Those are things like when I watch the slides, I right. get people around me to help me with. Well, that's what, As a that's example, that's what we're trying how, to do. See how helpful all you were? That's what we're trying to do, Dave. <laughs> uh, so the, the Hampshire, well, there, there are many uh, lobbying groups that taxpayers pay money to to lobby on behalf of certain uh, bodies. The New Hampshire School Board Association lobbies on behalf of the school boards. The New Hampshire Municipal Association uh, lobbies on behalf of the governing bodies of municipalities. In the case of Hampton, that would be, of course, the Board of Selectmen. Right. Okay. So the Hampton School Board has said, well, we're going to let anyone uh, that's an official at the schools, I guess, call up and the, their lobbying group and ask questions. Um, that's their decision and what they've done. It's what the Board of Selectmen in this town has done for decades, as Brian pointed out. Uh, but that changed, um, and it, it changed um, about, uh, I want to say, three years three ago. Three years ago, yeah. Um, and it was an interesting timing, and I won't get into the atmosphere that I believe created it, because I'm trying to be objective here. So 
And hopefully everything's been clarified at this point in terms of people's minds what we're talking about, right? Not necessarily. Okay. Well. I would like to know what we're going to do in the next week of somebody here, maybe you, maybe me or Ryan, to get hold of Regina or another selectman to see if somebody could come up with a five minute answer. We will have, we will have, I will assure you this, we will have a definitive answer at our October meeting, which is our last meeting before we begin budget workshops. Right. And we will resolve this in terms of a body, as a body, we will resolve how we're going to deal with NHMA. Uh, and we'll get as much of an update as we can get at that point in time. Hopefully it will have been resolved amicably at that point. Okay. Hopefully resolved amicably means that we would get the ability to talk. My concern is, and I just want to get this across, we wait till October where well, Regina says, I've looked into it, the answer is no. And now it's October, it's too late and we start in November. No, it is not, it is not, it is not too late. The bottom line is this. Um, I still have the opportunity if the board wishes, if the committee wishes me to go to the board of selectmen and plead our case. Uh, and we also have the action of taking the dues out of the budget. And as Brian pointed out, we have the opportunity as citizens to create a warrant article to suspend all payments to that lobbying group. Uh, so no, it's not a dead issue in October if we find ourselves unsatisfied with the response that we get. But again, I want to afford a sufficient time to try to get it resolved peacefully. So that's about all. Anyone else have any comments on this? Thank you. Um, HampTheBud.com status, not a lot to say here other than to remind you that it's out to HampTheBud.com. We're trying to keep that out as a website to facilitate the administration of this committee. And as you know, one of our objectives is, is to uh, make our meetings uh, productive and Succinct and, and productive. Uh, was I redundant there? I was, wasn't it? Productive, <laughs> succinct, <laughs> and fast. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> and one of the things we, we, we need to do is we need to identify those people that we traditionally have come in that we really don't need to come in, remember? Now I've got a list on our schedule. If you go to the meeting schedule, I've got a tentative list of those people, and I would like you to review them and make sure that everyone's included, first of all. And then, you know, you guys identify those people that we don't really need to see uh, or be prepared to begin that once we see the budgets, which will be around Halloween, okay? So that's all I have to say on Hampton Bud. Come on, anyways, comments? Brian, Brian? Yeah. HamptonBud.com, and I told you this before, I love the website. I mean, it's very, yes. the, the way you present the agendas, um, it's unbelievable. And, and also the videos and the, the, the um, the meeting schedule, uh -huh. very effective. I mean, you go right in. You don't have to drill down to any. I mean, you click on menu. It's right there. So it's kind of neat. And I can tell you, every meeting we have now till <laughs> to the March election. So uh, excellent stuff. Keep it going, Tim. I'm, I'm real glad to hear that. I'm very glad to hear that. But for me, there's, there's so many things to do there that uh, I, I never see the good stuff because I'm busy looking at what's You're wrong. You're looking at yeah, <laughs> so, right. I appreciate that Thank feedback. You. Any, any other comments, uh, thoughts? Okay, so that is uh, our old business. If there's no other old business, is there any other old business? Thank you. Uh, we will now enjoy a SAU 90 Hampton School District presentation from the wizards of Hampton School District, Kathleen and Nathan. And as All you yours. can only imagine, Nathan immediately went to HamptonBud.com <laughs> to check it out. So, um, and uh, perhaps we can find some uh, some interesting ways to present our information also. So, um, you know, kudos to you and, and to be able to be transparent and get the information out there. Well, as always, we are always happy to come back and, and visit with you. Um, we, I think by the end of the time, and we will try to be as succinct, fast, <laughs> And what was the third one you wanted? Um, <laughs> productive. productive. Yes. Um, and um, as possible. But um, we do take a lot of pride in the work that has been accomplished in the district. And um, Nathan and I are surrounded every day with fabulous employees. Um, our teachers have, I just go over and above what's ever asked of them. Uh, we have some <coughs> terrific administrators who are able to really, um, I always say, move the cheese. and and help us to become in an innovative school district. But quite frankly, it's led by five board members who, who, are, 
who are our champions. They push us. They, they want excellence. And when you see the meetings, they always uh, start out with celebrations of learning. They always have programs that come in so that they know what's going on in the district. So, you know, we, we are very fortunate uh, as a district, SAU 90, to have five very de dedicated school board members. And tonight, actually, one of our board members is with us. Andrea Shepard is behind us. Unfortunately, all of our members are in different places um, tonight, and um, so they, um, I guess they trusted Nathan and I to, to, uh, to spread the word. So thanks for having us, uh, Tim. We really appreciate it. Uh, tonight we will do a couple of things. It's on, we don't, we had hoped to be able to put it up in the PowerPoint up on the screen, but there's some technical difficulties. So in front of you, though, you have a copy of what we'll go over tonight. Quickly, we will review 1718. Um, year, uh, some notes and financial information. We will also update you on the current year, which is 1819, and give you some hints perhaps about what our budget development fiscal year 1920 is going to look like. And of course, the topic of conversation throughout the town is um, our Hampton Academy project. And so we will give you a little insight and a little update on the project. Uh, I'm pleased tonight to start off, and um, Nathan and I will go back and forth. And, uh, but I wanted to highlight some of the things that happened this past year. And I think, you know, traditionally, this has been a very strong institution for teachers. It has been, they, uh, as I said to you before, they, they rise above every day. They rise up, they meet the, the challenges of their classrooms and their students and their families. And I can't say enough about them. And again, for another year, uh, we had a semi-finalist candidate for Teacher of the Year in the state of New Hampshire. And Barbara Grand, uh, a kindergarten teacher over at Center School, was nominated, went through a very rigorous process, and was selected as a semi-finalist for Teacher of the Year. So we're very, very proud of Barbara's accomplishments. And uh, the, uh, we attended some of her presentations, and it was awesome. She did all things around science and STEM, and uh, which are big initiatives in the district. So. Um, again, kudos to Barbara for her great work here in the district. As again, every year our teachers and our schools are involved in uh, volunteer programs. All three schools are very active. Uh, this year, um, uh, last year, uh, Marston was awarded a blue ribbon for their hours. And all three schools have tremendous volunteers, but they all do it a little bit differently. And. Um, so when the committee looks at that, Marston had recorded all their hours, and um, so they were awarded the Blue Ribbon. Uh, in curriculum, which has been uh, really important in the district, we have spent the last eight years looking at every single piece of our, our cur curriculum, all the core subjects. We are now working on, and I'll get t to this a little bit later, but we're looking at um, some of our unified arts, our integrated arts. But one of the big challenges this year for our teachers was to create assessments that were um, assessments that were. Do you want me to? I'm you. Are you? I wanted to ask a question. One. So when I so stop I on this page, I'll stop yeah. and have you, Thank you do questions. Okay. Curriculum work has been really the, the premier work in the district. The, it's the foundation, it's the basis of what we do every day. So it has to be done with our teachers in, in a development with, with help, with consultants, and making sure that we are <coughs> on the cutting edge. And, and this past year, teachers have been working on performance assessments. No longer are they just pencil and paper tests and assessments. Kids build things, they record, they gather data, and they present their findings. So it's very different the way we assess whether a student understands the competency. Uh, we have been asked by the New Hampshire Science Association, uh, a group of our teachers from Hampton Academy in Marston, attended a statewide event and were asked to present the work that they did around performance assessments and received rave, rave reviews. So we're very proud of that work in curriculum. One of the other areas uh, this past year that we worked hard on is, as you know, revenues are so hard to find. Trying to use uh, different sources so that we can continue to do the work that we feel is important for our kids. So this year, this past year, we received a Title II leadership, $25,000 to allow uh, two of our employees uh, to work in the leadership field, and that's really important. We need to have a pool of strong leaders 
to take over when certain people might leave the profession. And there's, a, there's, there's it's always, I, I, re, I refer to it as a farm team. They're learning, they're practicing, and they're ready to step up. So we got a grant to support that work for those two, those two um, employees. We also received a $50,000 grant of, on trauma. We are one of six districts in the state of New Hampshire that received this grant, and we are in, uh, be, we are working to become a trauma-informed district. This is all related to children's mental health. This is all related to the issues around op opioids, drug and alcohol. So our teachers, our staff, are learning all about the effects of trauma and what it means when the, when children are learning. And it's been it's been a, a wonderful journey. We have finished our fir last year. We finished our first year, and we have three more years in the grant. So we'll continue to do that training. Uh, we also received another ten thousand uh, dollars on top of a grant we already have for English language learners. As you know, our program has expanded. From when Nathan and I came, there were eight students that were English speakers of other languages, and we now are up to thirty-eight students who speak uh, languages other than English. Uh, those youngsters are immersed into our classrooms, they're embedded in our programs, and supported by two of our teachers, and we got an extra amount of money to, to support them. And uh, last but not least, we just received this, a $22,000 Title IV grant, which will allow us to do innovative work in science. So we, we did make an effort um, to go out and secure funds. Um, we'll talk a minute later about some safety monies that we also got to enhance the safety of our schools. And um, again, um, that was an effort by our administrators to secure those funds. But honestly, this year was largely about Hampton Academy. I mean, it is every, every day, every week, uh, there are decisions being made. Uh, Nathan and I are at the table with um, David O'Connor and um, our consulting team uh, to make decisions about that school and the work that's being done. We'll get into that in a little bit. Nathan has some information for you, but clearly this past year has been a concerted effort to have a building that this community can be proud of for the next 50 years. And I can sit here right now and say that you will be, and you should be very proud of that building, and it will be um, something that the district will be proud of as, as they use it. Um, I'm very pleased with what's happened thus far. So I'll stop there. Okay, so that's page three, right? I'm on page two, I, I'm two. On I th okay, I thought you touched on three. Okay, yeah, so I any questions up I did to highlights. page two? Yeah, highlights. Up to and including page two. Dave? I just have a, a, a comment at the beginning. When you're through presenting everything tonight, will it be an opportunity to ask questions at that moment in time? Do, we, do you have in your agenda or on your agenda, whatever it might be, questions about 5, 10, 15 minutes that was needed to go over some of the issues. I don't want to break you up during the talk. Well, please yes, do the it. The format, the format traditionally has been that they do a full presentation uninterrupted and then questions ensue. Although there is, fine. There is, a, there is an argument that says after they go through each page, maybe they should ask for questions, and that, that no, makes sense, no, too. I'd rather, I'd rather uh, wait for the end. Is there a preference to this body, whether we wait until the entire presentation goes I think, on? I think it should be up to the chair, and I think that you should just um, rule well, on why don't we go on to page three? I have some questions up to there. Okay. Great. Can I just, uh, Mr. Chairman, my friend, Mr. Mara, could you pull the microphone, Dave? Because at home, I guarantee you, we have one member I've already told on another board. Leave it so when you speak into it, they can hear you at home. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. We want to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Kathleen, please proceed for another page. So um, we're on to the next page, and that will be the financial summary for 1718, and um, Nathan will um, share his information with you. So a very big deliverable uh, for you each year at this time is to come in and, and offer a retrospective on the fiscal year completed June 30th. And so uh, I can tell you, and you have documents in the back of the packet to support, we realized an operating savings, budgetary savings at the end of the year of $172,900. Um, on page seven of your packet, you can see a, a function summary of the, of the, uh, the district budget for 1718. Uh, if I were to offer some comments on the high points, um, uh, we, we had lower Lower, ex lower enrollment at the kindergarten level than, ex than, uh, than forecasted at budget time. And so we 
left a teaching position in kindergarten vacant and a teaching assistant paraprofessional position vacant as well. Um, we, we only fill that extra seat, if you will, that extra classroom as enrollment and class size expectations direct. So in the 17-18 year, we had a vacancy of those two positions serving a, a classroom. In the area of special education, we had some significant growth in the costs. We talked about that at budget time, so in building the 18-19 budget, um, we had to reflect significant out-of-district tuition costs and the related services and the transportation costs for those students. Uh, we haven't talked about it maybe in the last couple of years, but it's important to remember that one student with some significant needs, whose needs can't be most effectively met in the district, can at times be uh, in an out-of-district placement. And those all-in tuition costs can rise well beyond $100,000 and $150,000. And then when you add in some of the related services and transportation, uh, one student can have a pretty significant impact. And so in our case, we had a number of new students moving in or being identified with needs that weren't well addressed within the school system. And I have to tell you that the, the teams worked very hard to make the district solutions in the buildings in this community work for all students, but in some cases there simply are needs that can't be met here locally. And so those students drove overages that chased close to half a million dollars, and that's what you saw at budget time. We had special ed increases that chased just over a half a million dollars. Uh, and so we saw some of those cost overruns here. Beyond that, there were some retirements, and the teachers have collectively bargained um, retirement stipends for years of service and accumulated leave and so you'll see a couple of areas I offer the notes on that budget report they're a little bit cryptic but they're supposed to help <laughs> help remind me and and to the extent that you can decipher what they refer to they can help you uh, but so there are some impacts in the budget of some retirement stipends so we charge those to the lines the salary lines where the teacher would have been paid or was paid anyway so you'll see that there. And we don't budget separately for those stipends. We don't see a ton of them come in any given year. We, ha we suffer the risk of having too many come and it being a budget crunch or a budget crisis. But the reality is we are allowed under the contract to pay them in the subsequent year. So we have the opportunity to push that expense off till after July 1st if need be. We also are supposed to be informed by the teachers according to the collective bargaining agreement early enough to be able to reflect it in the budget development so that we can accommodate that if need, if need be. Um, and, and two other things, I guess, that pop out uh, for me are overages, I guess, uh, in the area of the SAU. We moved, to ref we moved to make space because of the building project. So the very first phase of the building project was to tear down the sixth grade wing, and we, sur we uh, accommodated that by moving the sixth grade out of the academy and over to Marston. To have enough classroom space there for the Marston, uh, for the sixth grade at Marston, we had to move the superintendent's office out. So SAU has been in temporary housing. We're at 7 Scott Road, down behind Hannaford's. Uh, and we, we didn't budget directly for those costs, we, we, because we didn't know what they were going to be at the time we developed the budget. And so you'll see some overage related to that. Again, we talked about the transportation costs related to those students. And, uh, and ultimately, there was a higher interest cost in our first year debt payment on the bond than we had budgeted. So remember, when we went to the Warren article for that vote, we put a number of $570,360 in, which was first year interest. That was an estimate based on what they thought the market would be, and ultimately our, our, interest, our interest overall is going to be measurably lower than we thought because we managed to sell those bonds, you'll recall, at 3.15%, but the way that the package was structured, we had a $13,000 additional interest cost that was beyond that article. Um, the Department of Revenue would have permitted us to change the appropriation on the fly, but in this case, it was only 13000 and in the aggregate, we, we thought we'd just leave it be so that we didn't have to try to explain later why the budget had changed. It was a clause that they offered up in some of the paperwork that made no sense to me, so in this case, we just left it as is. Those are the basic variances in the budget. And they all aggregate out to or add up to summarize 172,000. But the other part of the fund balance that will ultimately offset your taxes are unanticipated revenues. So on the next page, which is page eight, I want you to 
to uh, to see a, a, a side by side, if you will, of revenues. So as we speak in this time frame, we we put together. Well, I should go back. When we propose each year's budget, we have a revenue component that is the offset that isn't local property taxes. And we estimate those known revenues that we reasonably can identify. Then when we get to tax rate setting this time of year, we revise those based on any new information that we have about categorical aid that we could find, like tuitions that might be generated, like interests, interest income, rental of any of our facilities, et cetera. That's used to, to set the tax rate. Excuse me. Yes, sir? I have to interrupt. <laughs> you're talking about a number of different things. I'm trying to find the numbers you're talking about. I don't know where you are on this page. And now you're talking to the page behind it. You said 177,000. I'm looking for that. So if you have any of these numbers anywhere, could you tell us where you are at, at the time? At the bottom of page 7, your budget appropriation, yeah. the total balance. So this document, this document as it lays out, is a budget report. Right. Like you, I'm sure, see for any number of departments uh, on the municipal side as well. Your numbers are not correlating yeah. with ours. Page they seven. Not. This is page seven with us. Uh. <laughs> so I agree with Dave. I was going to interrupt. I, we're not following anything on here. I'm lost. On the page. Go to page. Oh, I understand that, but we need to. But Dave does to this. Turn to page eight. Eight, which page I did, eight. and I looked at it. I was lost. What did I? But I even some of the questions from page eight is not correlating what he's saying. Like retirement savings, I don't even know where he's where he's talking about the one seventy seven thousand. I don't know. Guys, I am so I apologize. I don't know how. Yeah, and you mentioned retirements. I, I don't see anything on here for that. So let's go back. Go to page eight. Yeah, that's where we are. I just I just ripped I just ripped one of these packages apart, just like you've got. I don't know how my Thank you. numbers look different. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe not. So, <laughs> well, close. Well, close, yeah. <laughs> there isn't a page where you just Page 8 is the bu budget report, right? Right. But I don't see the word retirement here at all. Uh, uh, right. Guys, I, didn't either. I don't see anything that says retirement in here. Uh oh. What you, what's the matter? What's the date on the top of the document? 19th of September. June 30th. Page 8. June 30th. June 30th, 2017. Yeah. It would be so much easier if you had June 18th like I got. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. We don't see any of the 18th. And stuff. this says draft, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give us the wrong handout? Yep. Okay, well, I, made 20, I made 20 copies of last year's. Oh. Are you familiar? <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I, I so thought I was seeing something. You can't there. see what I can see, so you can't. We'll have to just we, listen to the We can't follow. Right? So, David, I apologize. Clearly, the numbers are. I took you to the wrong page because your yeah. packet is all wrong. That's all last year. I. Uh, I so you, you will, you will not, email me the correct really PDF, right? I'm not accustomed okay. to making a mistake like that. I don't know how I picked up. It's okay. So well, they were on screen because I was I was doing uh, page numbering to make it look good <coughs> as last year. Those screens. Yeah. yeah. So it's safe to just put this aside. Put that right here. aside. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because okay. So. Not the right. So I guess since you so can't now we follow listen. It. Now we just listen. Now we listen. So. All of what I said is true if you were looking at the 1718 <laughs> document. Um, I'm almost inclined to run and get it. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So all of those were realities that we had the kindergarten position, et cetera, and our total bottom line is $172,000, $172,900 of, of, uh, uh, of unspent, uh, unspent budget. That so will be surplus. That will be applied. That will be applied to, to the tax. Because tax. Yep. Tax. when I was looking at this myself, I thought, oh, <laughs> he's saying a hundred and and you're seeing a bigger. And I'm seeing yeah. a last year was bigger. Four hundred and forty-three, and I'm thinking, well, gee, that's. I was going to ask about that when we got to the bottom <laughs> of the page. Right. Of so that's I think mine out. Okay. Think about okay. how I did. So that. I'm going to so just put that right over there. That, so so you're operating. I, I can go to the whiteboard. And we can. I love the whiteboard. I can do. So 172908 will be the 172908 is the budget surplus on the 3k under on the revenue side now, so that you that get the rest of it surplus does that include the half million you were talking about about special ed needs it's it that it's net of all spend I mean that's that's the spending side after we spent every after we spent everything that we spent home. in the year we still had 172 so yes we managed to we so managed the, to the half million dollars for the special needs is 
was included. Was well, and this is over. This is overage after that has been paid for. Not all of the half a million dollars was real <laughs> expense in the current year. It was kids come in in the middle of the year and you mm. see a tuition right, that yeah. drove that kind of increase in the 1819 budget. But no, if if you want to go back and say so, you would have had without the special ed, would you have had an, an eight hundred thousand dollar fund? No, we'd, because those kids don't all come in at the beginning of the year. So but Nathan, what you're saying then is that five hundred thousand dollar figure was an annualized figure? Yes. Okay. Thank yes. You. That was what was then reflected as we knew it for when we went year? through. I'm totally lost now yep. for what year you're talking. So about. over the course of seventeen eighteen last year, to June of this year, to June thirtieth. Yeah. Yes. We had overages in the area of special ed. Right. Identifying those. But you had enough in the budget to easily carry more than that. You were covered for the half million dollars, and now you have 172 or 173, whatever, 170,000. Right. That's Excess. correct, but if you had those expenses for the entire year, you might not have had this. Right. Saying. If I'd had those expenses for the entire year, but I didn't, right. because not all of those students, not all of those expenses were realized in the year. They are annual costs, <coughs> and they'll all be realized in 1819. That's why we had to bump well, the budget. Why are we talking two years in one then? That's in, well, that in itself is confusing because I'm hearing a half million dollars, but you know, well, this is only because kids came in. Well, I just want to know for the year 17 to 18, when the kids came in, was it 210, 220, 230? I understand that going forward, it might be a half million dollars and the year after might be one million dollars because you can't predict that. In 1718, the overage in two special ed tuitions was $255,476.25. Right. And I and I will I will work hard not to provide any supplemental or any peripheral data that might be confusing because I that's not my intent. I was You're doing a good having, job at though. Having <laughs> Like it's yeah. absolutely not the intent, and I I'm joking. and I and I and I genuinely apologize that you aren't looking at the same data I am. I, because we all go through this process together every year, do my best to try to give you the bigger picture so that you can see what's coming and anticipate it. That was all that I had intended. Wouldn't so the bigger picture? Would the bigger picture be for October, November when you present again, or in December? That's by the time I get just to talk you, about that. Okay. Now I'm trying to understand what went on from 17 to 18, and you're combining two two years into one, and it's getting confusing. My, I apologize. I will. D David, I will. can I help Nick? Can I just add something, please? please? Unlike the town budgets, the school's fiscal year is July 1 to June 30th. So when we approve budgets in March, right. the town is already in their next year budget. The school, when we approve in March, is still working on, for instance, in March of 18. Uh, March of 19, they're still working on the current budget. Right. That's why when they refer to a year and a half numbers, it's overlapped. It's just the way that budget fiscal year goes. So when we're done our budget, they're still working on theirs through, so uh, October, November, we're not going to get a lot of help. Yeah, so this is a good point. So yeah. what fiscal year are you spending money from? 1819. 1819. 1819. 1819. It started July 1st. Yep. You hear that, David? David? 1819. Today is fiscal year 1819, which was approved when? March of March. It was yeah. approved in March of this year. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's the budget that's spending from today. Right. Okay? When we come to you in December with a proposed budget, it'll be for 1920. We won't start spending any of that money until July of 19. That's correct. Right. 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 Okay. Mr. Chair. No. It, it, as well, if I could please try to help here. What you're giving us a presentation presently is for the school year that ended in June. Right. Correct. Okay. So he's, so David, please don't get confused. They're giving us a review of what happened in their, the last fiscal year that ended in June. That's, that's, why, it, yeah. that's why it might seem a little confusing okay well I think so, there's a reason there is some apples and oranges there was. Going on here yeah. because he's talking on one hand about what was actually realized in last year's budget while simultaneously projecting out into the next year's budget as to what that implies mm -hmm. and that projection is causing the oranges confusion. mixed with the apples and I don't have to do that and, okay. and that's what's causing confusion among some members yeah. yep yeah. But Nathan, we all used to Nathan doing that every year. So. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the intent is not to obfuscate. The intent is to provide you all the information that I can as quickly as I can because this Don't is what you guys do. So I'll, um, but I'll. You're uh, getting too quick. It's getting too confusing. Now, this number you were just throwing out, the half million dollars, was an annualized number. And, and under what account? 
Special ed tuitions, your special. out of district accounts. And so yeah. when, okay. and, when and now this has nothing to do with special education, is that correct, or it does? Oh, it does, absolutely. Okay, now you do have a special education trust fund. We right? do. And that trust fund is managed by the trustees of the trust fund? It is, and it okay. carried a June 30th of 18, it carried a balance of $231,478.29. Is that on the Which sheet? No, because the sheet, Nothing is, is, on sheet that. is dated. That sheet is no good. But Nothing that is number, on that sheet. That no, was last June sheet. Let's pretend so. it was the year. Is it's it not on that sheet. Counts. No. no. David, just so put, that, put that aside. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, it, so was in the, it was in the slot. It's, it's <laughs> not even that page, David. It's no, the whole packet. The whole, the whole packet. packet. That's a year old. The whole packet's a year old. David, recycle the special education. Let's calm down, guys. The special education fund. Yeah. Uh, special Education Trust Fund is actually up slightly from where it was last year. It has earned. So we got yes. great, mm -hmm. great uh, return from the trustees of the trust fund on that. Is that the reason? Um, it, it's up by, you can see the number. The numbers, last year's number is in the slide. It was 230 and change. Now yeah. it's 231. And change. It certainly is not in. It's not a thousand in, bucks, but you're spending. It's not in risky places, but. Well, no, but you're spending a lot of money. You spent a lot of money. Right. None of that. And, but you didn't spend any of this. We didn't touch so that's, that. There's the, that's where I'm leading to. Correct. Why? Uh, because, because you didn't need it. Because the because the bottom line of the budget so, shouldered the burden. Could handle it. Yeah. We, okay. we, so next year the bottom line of the budget might not handle it is what you're implying, right? No, I'm suggesting that you had to. You didn't have to. You you did approve a budget. No, I got that. that. Was up that was, by that's measurable. Passed. That's passed. Yeah, right. right. And but, we, but you when you implied a half a million dollars on your annualized thing, having an impact on next year's budget, right? Right now, I'm asking a question about next year's budget. I don't think we will see that kind of increase. You saw it already, yeah. and so with part question, of what my question is: yep. uh, with that potential increase implied in your half a million dollar figure, could that not be uh, reduced somewhat by the special education front fund, trust fund? Isn't that what it's for? That, that trust fund. It could be. It could be reduced, or it could be shouldered once by it. Okay. Thank yes. you. That's, that was all I was going yep. to do. Absolutely. So, so you know what it's said. So, on the on the don't revenue side, the revenue side, don't look at those numbers. He's got his own numbers. No, no, different. Not correct. The revenue the revenue side generated one hundred nineteen thousand of of excess, and and revenues generate excess because if you make a Careful, a careful assessment or a, or a projection of what you'll generate or raise, yeah. that's what we base taxes on. And had I been less careful and been more aggressive with my estimates, you wouldn't have raised as much. So any unanticipated revenue goes back to offset the next tax bill. In this case, it was 119,000. When you combine that with 172 of budget surplus, the total fund balance coming back will be $292,000. Now, Nathan, with, with your excess revenues and your budget surplus, just like the town, doesn't that automatically go into the unassigned fund balance of the SAU 90, which the school board may use some or all of that money to reduce taxes? Um, <coughs> so there is, a, there is, from three years or four years back, new legislation was passed and a law put in place that allows the, the school board right. to vote to retain uh, up to an amount that is 2.5% of the assessment for that given year. The board has not voted yet to do that or exercise that. So anything in the unassigned fund balance has gone back as a credit to offset the next tax bill. And so we, we can't hold anything. So that's automatic because of this legislation you're referring no, to? No, the legislation allowed the board to retain to retain up to that 2.5% if they don't vote to retain, they it automatic, goes back. Okay, yeah. thank you. And that's, and that's been the case so far. Thank you. So that should also apply to the town government, right? Yeah, uh, well, it doesn't, but. No. But well, we'll see. We'll, we'll inquire on with the appropriate people there. That's what the, I mean, the, that's the, that's the rules that apply to the schools. The, what I was chasing was to. Aren't you operating under the same budget laws? Not that one. Well, I mean, we can't hold a retain. We, prior to that law being passed, there was no mechanism for a retention of fund balance in the schools. Mm -hmm. When was that passed? You were right here. I want to say three years ago, yeah. Three years ago. Maybe. Um, Too bad we don't have access to an HMA to ask them. <laughs> Maybe you could ask the, uh, I'll ask the school board for us. Would you do that? Would you do that, Kathleen? Seriously. Will you build the town? So the, so the, rule, the rule of thumb that we, I have operated under for years is that um, 
a fund balance ought to reasonably be somewhere in that one and a half to two percent range. On a twenty million dollar roughly budget, something in the four hundred, three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollar range feels like it's fair. Um, although we work hard not to have it be any more than that. Although I will tell you, if you go back and look at the, the preceding three years, it has floated right about four hundred forty, four hundred fifty thousand each year to offset taxes. So. What we saw in the special ed realm did impact us and dropped us down to this number that's closer to 200, uh, $300,000, $292,000. So um, that's the financial picture, I guess. I can also tell you in the notes what you would have seen, uh, federal grants, your consolidated grants, Title I and Title II and Title III, and the IDEA special ed grant that supports uh, special, ed, uh, special services in our schools with our students. That, we, we brought $474,000 of additional uh, grant funding um, that uh, provided for programming that you didn't pay for locally. 474 federal 400, grant money? 474,300, yeah. So Nathan, federal dollars. Nathan, so would it be proper to conclude that that number that you mentioned is, was it 292? Yeah, 292. Balance, yeah. Is that going to be, is that the number that's going to be applied to offset taxes? Yes. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. That, of course, um, everybody here might not know that the, there's an MS form that was due on September 1st. Um, don't worry, I haven't done it neither. <laughs> Nobody's done it. That's close. I'm real okay. close. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm real close. Yeah, I'm close too. Um, that it has to revised revenue. So that it, it has to be done because for the town of Hampton, they try to set the tax rate, usually during that second week of October, okay? So the DRA needs those numbers from the school district, from the village district, from the town of Hampton. And if they're listening, we're working on them. Right, we are. Mine will be done tomorrow now. Thank so you. Nathan, 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 that's 474 k from federal grant money. Uh, is that money to special projects or that are outside the budget? How do I want to say that? Yes, it's not a, it's it's a, it's it's not it, yeah. It's not represented in the general fund budget. You included in the budget that you vote on in March right. is a gross appropriation figure. Right. It's actually seven hundred and twenty-five thousand. So we have four hundred seventy-four thousand of new federal grant money that obviously you can't spend because it hasn't been appropriated yet, right? No, you know, you appropriate it every year. You appropriate yeah. grossly. I know we appropriate every year, but did we appropriate this 474K? Yes. We did. Okay, so it's already in the budget then. The, the syntax of it is hard for me to get by, but yes. It's not in the. It's you don't not like in my the, syntax? Well, it's not in the general fund budget. Oh, is it my it's phraseology that bothers you? It's not local tax dollar budget, right? It's a, it's a gross. I understand it's not yeah. local taxes, but but yes, it has been appropriated. It was appropriated the budget, for 17, 18, and, and it was we've already blessed that last yep. year. Yes, so sir. that's just four hundred seventy-four thousand dollars that we've already previously appropriated. Right. The monies didn't come from taxpayers locally; it came from feds. Yeah. Okay. That's so what. So the that's Fed helped us with almost a half a million dollars. Well, I don't know if you want to call it help or not. You'd have to drill down at that. I don't know if I like your syntax on that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not give it all the special whatever. They get to send about an LU. Essentially, you're correct, yes. Essentially, right. you're correct, yes. Because yeah. sometimes my interpretation of a grant is it's for something specific. And it, it, if they give you a big giant bucket, I'm thinking a half a million is a giant bucket to me. It, to me, it's a big bucket. It was, David. It was specific, and its right. specifics are in the budget. And they're all in the all. It's in the budget. It's items. in the budget. Yeah. All they can't spend anything that hasn't been appropriated. Right. right. So and there's only two ways of appropriating. You, one's the budget, and one's warrant articles, separate warrant articles. Do you pick and choose when you get the half million, and you had all these expenses you're going to do? You can say, well, we really need to make, help this particular item. Whatever that may be, certain. No, it's, it's, way, it's way more specific. No, it's than that. very prescriptive. Yeah. The so grants are very prescriptive. Well, Let me give you an example. Used. Let me Correct. give you an example. Um, Title One. Yeah. Title One is money that's sent to Hampton for youngsters that um, are in the uh, low income bracket right. and who have um, issues, remedial issues in reading and math. So we use that money to support youngsters with extra support 
to bring them up to grade level, but it's very specific. I can't take Title I money and use it to, um, to uh, uh, support- By lunch. By lunch, or support uh, other kinds of things in our budget. Um, that's what I The thought. facilities, or the grounds, or you can't do that. You, that's- Have, Can the word grant, it's sort of, I'm interpreting in the past, you recall, it. they give you something for a specific That's item. correct, this that's is correct. This going to go to here, and you cannot spend it anywhere right. else. There are some grants, however, that we have some liberties. I talked to you just about a Title IV grant that we got this year for 22000 It had a number of areas that I could have written that grant for. Because we were so intent on our work in science, we devoted that grant, it was a competitive grant, to um, the, the science area. So it was, it, it was a broader in nature. It wasn't as prescriptive, perhaps, as the Title I. And the IDEA is very prescriptive. It's all about special education services. And so um, we can only spend that money in special education services. But if the government didn't give us that grant and we wanted to do all those things, we would have, have gotten it from tax money. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Well, local tax money instead of federal tax money, essentially. Well, yeah, yeah we are yeah. the town of Hampton. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, you mentioned earlier, Kathleen, a grant for security that you have secured as, as a new item, right? Right, we were very fortunate. Again, we, we, were, we went out, we, we reviewed our buildings. We, we have done, as you know, over the last several years, we have done a number of analysis around safety in our buildings. Tonight, I gave you all a lanyard. There was a purpose to that. That lanyard is a lanyard that every teacher, every employee wears now, so that when the police or the fire come into our buildings, they know you're an employee of Hampton School District, SAU 90. So they have your picture and all that. And I have, them. obviously, my, my, my identification. But lots of times, they don't see that. They want to see the lanyard. They want to see everybody wearing the same one. So. I'm not saying that we use the grant to buy these, but we have been very diligent about looking at security in our buildings. And so we did um, apply for a grant through the Emergency Management, um, Homeland Security for the State of New Hampshire, and we were awarded a grant for $862,000 to Hampton. It was a, a, a good chunk. Um, we uh, Basically, that money is split in three ways. It's about a quarter of a million for each school uh, to improve all of the safety features in those buildings uh, to ensure that our teachers, our staff, and our children are protected. And uh, we're working on that right now. We have, we have allocated, uh, I consider substantial money for security in the past year of budgets and warrant articles. And, uh, now we have a six hundred or eight hundred sixty-two thousand dollar grant from the feds coming up for next year, right? Right. Well, we've already we, we've we've applied for it. We've been awarded that. We've um, just recently finished all of the planning because you know we had to get the specs for all the work, <laughs> and then get you know bids on on the various items that we were um, intending to implement, and we will begin that work. Shortly, really, we're close to doing that now. But it isn't the end of the security work that we need to do in the district. I want to be clear about that. Is, is there a match with this uh, federal grant? Um, the, the grant was 80% um, was supported by the, the grant and 20% by the district. So what, what we did in anticipation of receiving the grant, with our fingers crossed, we put money into the maintenance article. The Warren article, do you remember the Warren article last year? That Warren article has set aside money that covered that 20 percent. So in essence, the total amount of money that we can expend is 862,000. Um, 20 percent of that was from us and the remainder of that, 600 and... 66. Six 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 hundred and sixty six thousand um, came from the emergency homeland security. So the grant was not for eight hundred sixty two. It was for six six six. Well, the again, applications were for the hundred percent of spending was eight hundred thirty two five, and the the eighty percent state share was six hundred sixty six thousand. State share. It's a state grant, not a federal state grant. grant. Okay, so it's well. State. It, to pass through, but yeah, came from the right. The state grant for security for yep. 666. Very 
noteworthy number. I was, yeah. It came on three different letters because it was three different buildings, that, three different applications. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Only when you add them together do you get to 666. Oh. But it was te it was startling when I saw the number on the 10 key adding machine. That's sure. But that's so. a classic example of you get a grant and you use it for that specific purpose. You're not you're not going out and you know buying textbooks with that money. That so money was clearly designated for safety. What, what we've got is a is a grant a state grant for security. Uh, which has a match to it that we're obliged to match, 20%. And we're able to take that 20% out of a building maintenance warrant article from last year. Is that what I heard? That's correct. And so the money for building maintenance that we allocated was not spent, apparently. That, that, that's not a, a, totally accurate, Tim. Um, we anticipated that grant, and when we developed that warrant, we put that money in to be inclusive of that 20 percent. The 300,000 carries a, every year, it's a yeah. two year, it's a two year appropriation so we can kit the multiple years together to do larger yeah, projects. Yeah, I'm aware of that. You know, yep. I, it's one of my favorite warrant articles. I know it is. And I pay attention to it yep. pretty closely every year and it's noteworthy to me, noteworthy to me and I'm leaving it at that as a note, all right, and that's it. I now. just want to be very clear though, had we not got the grant there would have been um, requests f um, from the, our local taxpayers to, to address some of the deficiencies that we felt needed to be improved in our school buildings. And that would have been found in the maintenance warrant article. Well, night, tonight is not the night for a detailed discussion on that. I right. Think. I suspect and that so will come up in December. It, it may, depending on or how when you we present do our things warrants. and whether you're presenting right. two years ago or not. <laughs> Just kidding you, Nathan. You don't mind, do you? Yes, he does. <laughs> can't believe that. Hey, he's human. He's allowed to make mistakes like all of us are. So. You don't have to remind him. <laughs> so it's not I, an insult to remind someone they're human, you know? <laughs> yeah. If I could, uh, I'd just, I'd like to move on to district mm -hmm. goals, if I could, yeah, unless there's any. Be very good. All right. The, the, the goals remain, this, we're moving on now to the current school year. We've kind of given you a picture of what happened last year. Um, and based on that work, we've moved on. And the board has adopted these six goals. M several of them are very familiar t with to you. Um, operations, uh, governance, communication, and curriculum. Those are been pretty steady for all the years we've been here. Two new ones this year. The first one is social emotional learning. And this is the effort by the, by the school district to address children's behavioral health children's mental health and the all the issues that come with that and we have um, begun work on um, activities and curriculum and support for youngsters around the issues that they face and uh, I don't you know I, I could come in and tell you lots of things that are happening but some of our children have really um, had some major challenges um, because of the opioid crisis we've you know, we've had kids who have lost their parents um, because of overdoses. Um, we've had siblings who've lost their, their younger sibling uh, to uh, overdose. And so we are working with our kids to help them and educate them, one, to be able to be resilient, to handle those things, and also to be able to educate them, inform them, and, and so as they, you know, grow, and, and face those challenges is when they get older into middle school and high school uh, that they will have the tools necessary to face that. So that's one goal and that's really important. The, the third goal, number three, is around equity. And I, I, I think you all are very aware that the demographics in our community, in our state, in our nation are changing. And I think that um, we, we felt really, it was really important to make sure that all of our kids understood uh, the diversity that exists in our in our in our town, in our state, and in our country. And those that diversity is around um, racial um, and ethnic diversity, as well as uh, gender. So we we uh, and religious equity. So we are working on that. We're in a very early stage of this, helping um, everyone to understand differences and accepting those differences. And and, um, and and the and the beauty, if you will, of when children come to school with different backgrounds and the things that they can share with their 
classmates. And we've seen that with, our, with the changes and the number of new children from other countries that have come to Hampton, uh, what they bring to us and bring to the classroom. And so we're working on that, uh, ensuring that um, all kids have um, a level playing field. Uh, this includes youngsters of poverty, uh, where maybe they don't have as many opportunities, and we're trying to make sure that um, their education is equitable. So that's the sixth goal, and we expect that that will be doing a lot of work on that. But we are in the infancy, if you will, of that of that goal. We good? I'm going to go on then, and I'm going to social and emotional support. Social and emotional support, that's Tim, is really goal, around right? mental health issues. That's the, that's the sixth goal that's been added. This yes, year. that's the new one that's been added. Equity and the social emotional are the two new ones. Uh -huh. can, okay. can I just ask? A, um, I watch all the meetings, and I was so impressed, as I am all the time, but last week's meeting, this social emotional thing is very important. And one of the things that I've addressed with Mrs. Shepard and the Chairman Shepard and others, and just people I run into, I think people need to realize that not only the great staff they have, but the school resources office play a huge role with that. Because outside of parents, these kids go talk to them. So when you're talking about mental illness and things that happen in this community, I have to believe, you know, when people think of school resource office, they think, oh, somebody's gonna come in at a, you know, an awful thing, which as Superintendent Murphy and, and, and the Assistant Superintendent Lunny have said, it's more than that. So I'm proud to say this town, the money well spent and Congratulations to you folks for the for putting those monies in and, and that one article, but explaining to the public, that was a great discussion as they all are. But I, I think that needs to be stated more and more because it's such a marriage. These kids are searching for, if, it, if some don't have parents, some don't have homes, the homelessness discussion. I just commend you and I, I'm really excited about the prospects of this new these new goals because I think it's really part and parcel of how communication is the key, so thank you. We, we know that in, uh, until children's, um, their mental health is so important around their learning, the research is very clear. Mm -hmm. What trauma yeah. and what mental health, mental health issues will do in terms of student learning. And we know that we can help youngsters achieve to their full potential by addressing this issue. It's, it, it, the research is there. Um, I'm, I'm, and we're using that to help us uh, to ensure that all of the kids are uh, reaching their potential. And we're pretty pleased with the progress that's being made. So, so thanks for those comments. I appreciate it, Brian. Have you already initiated activities in this school? We already have. Um, our t it's really around teacher training. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also been working with a community group um, th that um, does a lot of mindfulness and um, that uh, yoga, that kind of activities to help kids when they're dealing with trauma and mm -hmm. anxiety um, and depression. So we're um, working with not only just the school district, but we're working with outside agencies. We work with um, the Southern uh, New Hampshire Mental Health Center. Uh, we work with Seacoast, Seacoast Mental Health Center. We also work with Seacoast Youth over in Seabrook. Um, they support us with staff. So. Uh, we have folks that come right on. We have counselors that come right on to campus and uh, work with kids and families. So uh, we consider that sort of wraparound that all of us working together can support those youngsters. Some Quick of those question. organizations. Very like, different than days of yore, yeah, I guess. Some of those organizations that you mentioned, uh, the town funds. Yes. Uh, right. When, social you services. Know, uh, right. Apples, Having right. Seacoast Mental Health, they, they have counselors come right on to our campus now and meet with kids and counseling. And the reason we did that was we found out that lots of times mom and dad, mom or dad or single, came home from work. They were exhausted. They needed to put supper on the table. And they didn't go to their, their counseling sessions in the early evening. Or the other issue, huge issue, no transportation. Yeah. They couldn't get there. So we said, well, we, that, that doesn't make sense because who gets hurt? The children. So we said, come on into our schools. Work with us in schools. Meet those kids' needs right in school. And by the way, the, the deal is, is that the parents have to come in too and they have to participate. So, so these just, are service organizations right. that the town is historically funds every year with a special warrant article. Right. We don't pay um, anything for those services. We're getting, your, your school board is getting yeah. all those services gratis then, right? 
for, for those areas, we, we pay nothing. Okay, that's right. Now, I appreciate know. the fact, and I do see that in the, in the town, they always <laughs> make contributions right. to those yes. organizations. Right. And that's, I suppose it, it, it helps, it does, it helps it us. Helps. Quite frankly, it helps us. Quick question, please. I assume this goes from all the children from K through eighth grade, correct? Goes from pre-K through eighth grade. Pre-K. Pre-K. Pre we have youngsters in our school over at Center School that are three years old. Okay. Now, does the, you must work with the high school. Very, very closely. So therefore, as, as a child goes through the program and needs assistance, all their records go with them and they continue to get assistance all the way through right. graduation. Our, our social, we have a social worker on, on, as you know, in the district and our, our counselors and mm -hmm. our director for special services, um, they all work very closely with uh, the folks over at Winnicana, we have a great working relationship with them. I'm really pleased with it. Thank you. Any other questions for SAU 90? Uh, I'd like to get, oh, go I ahead, Ms. Just Ladd. one question. It's really not about what's just been presented, but I was wondering if the chair of the school board could uh, bring us up to date on the status of the land in West Hampton, whether you intend to keep it, sell it, or So you would consider a Warren article to get a, a sense of the town? It's one of the things that's being considered. I want to well, we need to that. hear from everybody because we're a community and it's not it's not just something that the board, as I said, will unilaterally decide. We need to hear from everybody in the community. It needs to be, you know, we really need to be very thoughtful about this decision. It seems like it should be something really easy, but it's not. It's a lot of a lot of stakeholders, and we want to make sure we've heard from all of those stakeholders before any decision is made. Any other questions? Yes. Mr. LaBranche. Are you finished? Um, <laughs> we have a couple I, of I things. Wanted to, I thought you were going to talk about the, um, and I'm very interested in the, um, the academy, for instance, so I, I, I just want to get an idea of whether you're finished or yeah, not, because if you we're, are. We're, well, let me just go over a couple more things that would, we please. think that would be pertinent. And I, I'm going to talk about the legislative actions and changes that have that mandates that are coming down and are on our shoulders. And I, I listed some, and we'll have it in the packet when we send it out to you. But we have new legislation that is requiring a play curriculum for kindergarten, a piece of legislation that uh, it requires that we test every single faucet, every single water access point in the entire school district for lead, which we've already done most of it. We now have a required mandated uh, uh, dyslexia uh, assessment that we must do on first grade. It's good legislation. We've already been doing that, but we had to increase the the tools to measure that. We now have a new uh, piece of legislation around data security inventories. We have to create uh, data security for all of our information and so that's another increase in um, expenditures and also emergency planning and reporting and all I want to do is just make the point that all of those issues came without any money. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, we try really hard to maintain a budget that is reasonable to the community, that everybody can accept, that doesn't show huge fluctuations, but I hope everyone can appreciate that when the, when the folks in Concord make those decisions and vote that way, uh, that it does have impact. Uh, the, the, a classic this year was the voucher bill, 
where money was going to be taken from adequacy money to pay for students who went to schools outside of the public schools. The very interesting problem in Hampton was we don't get any adequacy money. We get zero. So we were fascinated, Nathan and I, to know where we were going to get that money and to pay for the students who may in be enrolled via the uh, voucher bill. The voucher bill did fail. Um, and um, I was appreciative of the position that uh, some of our legislators in Hampton. But just, just be aware that m many of the things that are coming down on us and the changes you might see are, are mandated. And Kathleen, it does present a different challenge for us. You mentioned that there is new legislation coming from the State House, right? Uh, that mandating things that are going to require additional expenditures. That's right? correct. Now, our state constitution is explicit in forbidding uh, such legislation. I'm sure that someone might have brought that up during the process, have, have they not? I suspect they did. <laughs> but um, it, it, uh, perhaps it fell on deaf ears. So our state house is basically knowingly and willfully violating our own constitution, it sounds like. You might want to share that with those That's folks what I'm that trying make to those do right decisions. Now. I know you are. <laughs> The, the last piece I think that I we would have also acknowledge that the schools are one of the most heavily regulated areas um, by politicians who just love to throw ideas around and make them look like they're all saving the children and all that sort of stuff. And this is an example of them doing it in, in spite of violating our fundamental principles that are enshrined in our Constitution. It's just very sad to see. Thank you. Go ahead, please. And, and I think that we wanted to talk about the project and where we are. So I'm yes. going to just, I'm going to turn it over. You've heard enough from me. I'm going to let Nate talk a little bit about our project, where we are. Could and be what risky. <laughs> no, no. no, no. You're, you're okay. So, so the project, the project has really, is, is reaching a midway point. Uh, if you can appreciate that the first major phase was new construction of the, of the wing. Uh, along the back side, the east side of the property. That new construction will be completed and staff and students will move in at the end of October. Oh, good. Um, there's a transition plan over the course of the weekend, uh, 26, 8, 9, uh, 26, 7, 8, October. And so students uh, in 7th and 8th grade will come to school on October 29th and they'll be in the new wing with their, with their faculty. Uh, the project focus at that point will shift to renovation and uh, although it, it, it is a plan that has morphed over the last six months, uh, this, this second phase, if you you'll let me call it that, will actually include renovation of the entire 30s and 60s wings, with the minor exception of the cafeteria in the bottom floor. Because it's the, it is the cafeteria, it will continue to be the cafeteria when finished. So renovation there will have to happen uh, next spring and summer. But the rest of the property, the rest of the building will be fully engaged in the renovation um, after the 29th of October, which uh, was a, a plan or a, a decision that was devised to create maximum opportunity for them to accelerate the process so that we are uh, moving towards a, a grand opening for kids in that building, the whole building, next year. Uh, project team is continuing to work together very well. We've appreciated the work of uh, Trident Advisors, our owner's project manager, uh, obviously our design team and engineers at uh, H.L. Turner Group out of Concord, and uh, our builder, the construction management firm, Bonapage and Stone out of Laconia. Uh, it has, it was a very busy summer. We have, uh, we've had staff in uh, recent weeks uh, to see, get an update. Uh, I think the superintendent described it just this evening walking in as a really emotional reaction when they see uh, what they're going to be working in. And for the 7th and 8th grade and related arts staff that are in the building now, they'll be doing that uh, just a month from now. Building committee continues to meet regularly uh, and, uh, and they have been touring the facility at their monthly meetings. Uh, they review uh, progress reports. Uh, and have been offering feedback uh, to different elements of the effort as we go. Uh, I'm talking to the budget committee, so the budget for the project is important. Uh, I can tell you in a very general sense, we continue to be performing or succeeding within budget. Um, 
if you can, without a graphic to look at, if you can recall that um, the, the project, when it was estimated, had a hard cost of construction of 22.9 million, soft costs, which included design work and the, the orange project manager, et cetera, and a contingency of 1.1 million. Um, we, have, we have eaten about half of that contingency. First with uh, total design work, the guaranteed maximum price that was finally locked in was not 22.9, it was 23, it, 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 it is among 20, 23,284, yep, um, 23,284,000. And then we've had uh, we've had uh, a couple of major, um, I say major, a couple of significant change orders that we talked about for months before we could get to the point of actually recording it and documenting it. But we had to deal with asbestos abatement when we tore down the sixth grade wing. We found this mastic, uh, black mastic that was a, a sealant, kind of a glue that was uh, in places that it had not been in, identified in the testing and sampling that had been done. So we had to do abatement of that. And then it's amazing the public conversation about the ash dump that we're building on <laughs> that never came up in any of the meetings that we had prior to. But on the uphill side, on the high street portion of the property, as we started to move <laughs> earth, we found unsuitable soils that had to be abated and dealt with. Uh, and so uh, together, the final design and those change orders contributed to um, taking a significant bite out of that contingency. But Again, we've, we have redoubled our efforts. We tested, uh, we tested uh, the slate and the roof. We tested the penetration areas. And, uh, and Mr. Lassard reports all good news about all the abatement that has been done in that building over the years, historically. Uh, and so we're confident right now that the contingency that we continue to have, along with the design plan, uh, uh, will allow us to continue to, to move forward and deliver on budget. And so. Right now, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and, and I believe our intent is uh, to have some opportunity for folks to see it in October, uh, in November. Once, once we get moved in and the kids are there and the staff will deal with them first and get them situated, and then create an opportunity for folks to see uh, what's been completed in that first phase. So you're talking about total, total completion of September 2019, is that right? Well, we, Did I hear that right? we we would like it we'd August like, we'd like that 19 right. August. prior to the new school like year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So August 2019 is still the goal for That's total correct. total completion. Yeah. Right. And you're completing phase one in November of this year, and phase two is the final phase, right? The final phase, essentially the renovation. Okay. Right. It, they 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 had envisioned in the original plans. We had talked about multiple phases of renovation. Mm -hmm while we occupied portions of the 30s yeah. and 60s wings. We're pulling back completely from that now to give them a chance to engage so that when the trades move, they can move globally right. through that space. And they, their projections right now say that that's going to help us make up, right. make and, up and for you that. you have no indication that you're going to be needing to spend beyond the Warren Apple appropriation. Is that accurate? Yes. OK. Any, anything further? I assume you're done, right? We are. Okay. Thank you. Dave? Quick question on, on just on that that topic yes. over there. The seventh and eighth graders are going to start using it around October. Is what yep. you said. Now, will they be in there permanently? And what are they going to do for cafeteria? Do they have all the classes down in that op new open wing. That would they, they'll be using. They'll have full 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 use of the wing, okay. and the opening exists on the basement level, if you will, the ground floor, the floor right. number one they'll be able to move from the new wing into the cafeteria and they'll use the cafeteria as it is cool. straight through so good planning mr lebranch so the 30s and 60s parts of the building that you referred to the trades will be in there for instance in a classroom uh, working and the students won't be correct okay and the um, the roof on what used to be the gym that was a slate roof it, I've driven by and I, I try to keep looking. Let me ask you, are the, is the place leaking anymore? Any, any place in that building, is it leaking? Are the roofs all been replaced? I, I, it's funny because this is one of those who's going to answer that question. I'll tell you that in our building project meeting this morning, they were talking about a, a point uh, under, the, under the newly completed roof um, where they found water. And they went back and it was a flashing 
uh, uh, flashing issue where there was a penetration on the membrane, but uh, otherwise, no, we haven't seen. But this today was a Good. was a great opportunity. So tomorrow, I may have a different report for you because they were <laughs> they were looking for any evidence but, of there being the new, any problems. The new roof right. has been placed on. Has been placed. They and did the roofs across the board. Yes. Okay. Yep. And the um, and. So the, there's a new gymnasium that they're going to be using? Yes. It's finished, or almost. Well, it will be. Yeah, Good. the gymnasium is the last piece, really. They'll yep. be laying the, yeah, the wood floors will be delivered tomorrow. Okay. Uh, they have to get used to the environment first mm -hmm. before the they lay it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then they'll be laying that floor down, and uh, we're finalizing all the basketball lines and volleyball lines and, and the, the colors. And the locker rooms are the all locker set rooms, I, You uh, know, I can't wait to see. I just can't wait to see so it. So part of the, just so that there are, there are, we are, we are using creatively the space that we have in the new wing to free up. So there are a couple of places that would not traditionally house staff that will, for the remainder of this school year, house staff in the brand new wing because that was the only way to find space for them. So there are team rooms team rooms that are not wet space, they'll have lockers for visiting teams to change up and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. that will house some staff, for instance, as offices, administrative offices, because we could delay completing those rooms. I don't believe they'll be in there butting arms with the butting shoulders with the lockers. We'll wait on the final completion of those spaces and we'll use them creatively. The community room will be the administrative office and the nurses suite during the course of the remainder of this year until we can complete the renovation and move them back over. So, so when folks do get a chance to see it, things will not be, they won't be in final form, right. but it's a brand new wing and the kids and the staff, I'm sure, will appreciate being there. Thank you very much. Mr. Latt. Uh, during the bonding period, there was discussion of community use of the facility. Right. Is, uh, is there any input as to where that status is at? Well, Nathan referred to the community room, which is a, about a 1,200 square foot room with a, a kitchen area, sink, and a refrigerator, a stove, and um, and that will be uh, the community room, but won't won't have access to that until we finish up the project. So it wouldn't have access until 2019. However, uh, August of 2019. However, the gymnasium uh, will be. I mean, we expect that we'll be working with HYA and the Recreation Department so that that becomes used by the community. From the get-go, this project was about community. Now, that community room, could that be used during school hours or would that be after? Right. We, we designed it so that you could use it during school hours. Uh, there is no access point into the building. That was a concern that we not avail access from that community room into the where the students were. So you cannot access that. The, 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 you have to go out into the lobby, which will all be um, regulated by locks and locked down because once the students are in the building, all doors are locked down. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but we, we anticipated that, but for instance, we've had requests from um, the seniors, Meals on Wheels, using that room in a way to help them during the day. We have the walking club, sometimes they don't have a place to go so that they could use that. And there's access to the room from the outside. Thank you. There's access to the community room David. from the outside. David. David. Yes, there's a doorway, there's a doorway and a handicap accessibility. Mr. Walberg. Thank you. Did you, are you all set? We had a question. <laughs> I have a bunch of others, you go right ahead. Oh, Mr. Walbert, was, your, was oh, that your question? Uh, no, what, what? <laughs> first of all, a couple of quick comments. Um, Mr. LeBranch, I know, remembers Mr. Pluff, especially and other people in the audience. You know, back in the early 90s, there was talk of putting a senior center within the center school when we were gonna do that addition over. So you talk about how that's gone back, but I'm so glad to hear about the community, as Mr. Ladd pointed to. Um, I want to go back to the last meeting because you and Nate said this tonight and it's so important and, and Chairman Shepard said it and I hope we keep saying it. I get stopped by people all the time. The building, when is it going to get done, this and that. You have always maintained and Chairman Shepard reiterated it last week, August of 2019. That's correct. So what I tell people is, and I happen to know a superintendent who's done other uh, many additions in this state, 
um, you run through these things, right? I mean, there are nooks and there are crannies and there are abatements and there are all kinds of things. I'm really proud. This is going to be, it's the largest school addition we've done in this town money-wise, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a showcase. And, and interesting enough, it's probably the school that needed it the most of when you, when you look at all the schools we've done in prior years at all the building committees and that sort of thing. The only thing I want to, else I want to mention, Mr. Chairman, is getting back to the auditorium. I think Superintendent Murphy's uh, phone is going to be off the hook. I think you're <laughs> going to see a lot of requests for that auditorium. It's going to be fantastic. And the gymnasiums, we now in the HYA have had to displace certain events that go over to other places because having coached in the girls and boys gymnasium, they're horrible. I mean, they're just, a, they're horror. I mean, and the new ones are, are going to be so nice that I think you're going to see more activity <coughs> there. But um, I appreciate, too, and if I could ask Mr. Lenny, too, to continue that great positive uh, numbers as the chairman alluded to about the cost and how everything's looking fine and at every school board meeting, much like we did with town projects, we would come in every week, select was meeting, this is where we are, it's going to get done, whether it was Route 1 or the police station or whatever it was. And the public likes that. And I'll tell you, I've been a huge promoter of it. Um, I think it's wonderful, and I appreciate the hard work you guys have done. Any other questions? Yes. Mr. Mora. Thank you, sir. I uh, have a number of items I wanted to go over, but I don't think we're really in depth. So maybe I bring up some ideas or questions I have and you answer them into the future. Okay. Just saying generally. But what adds to it is, has anybody in this room seen the Time Magazine this week? I have. <laughs> What's on the front cover? It's, it's a teacher. You got it. And a teacher who is having to work nights um, and uh, in order to supplement her salary uh, to survive. And she sleeps in the same bed as her son, and she's been fired three times, and she's doing this to schools. And then you go into the whole article, and basically it's about they bring up the, the schools that had a picket, and some teachers now getting paid 45000 when you were getting 7000 back an hour a day. It ends up being, it used to be a 1.5% difference, now it's like an 18% difference. The school teachers are buying books for the kids, they're using antiquated books. So it's really a great article in reference to the status of schools throughout the entire country and getting to ones that really need a lot of help. So I, I think it's a great article. So anything to do with teaching should be looking at that and, whatever, and when we, we've done better, we should be proud of ourselves. But you sh can I just comment, David, because I really believe, and I've worked around the state, and I've been in a lot of different communities, and I know a lot of different superintendents. And this community has stood up time after time after time and supported their schools and supported their school teachers by passing their contract mm -hmm. and being, you know, um, reasonable with not only their salary items but their um, their benefits and. Um, I, I, I think I can speak, Andrea can say it, I mean she certainly knows um, that the board has been supportive and creating the type of environment and the culture and the climate in the schools that allow teachers in this town to be successful and I think, and I think we've seen it. Now with that being said, we're having a great academy being built. We're paying teachers a certain amount but I'm going to get back a little bit to what I was getting uh, to last year, and then um, when I brought up the fact, where, where does Hampton's credibility-wise, quality of student, quality of education fit in? You just threw me a softball. <laughs> Pardon me? You, <laughs> you just me, threw me, me a finish. softball. Good. He's got spit after, on it. <laughs> good. And Mr. Nathan and I, I went down to see Mr. Nathan, we talked for about an hour, and kept caught back and forth and whatever. So I was hoping that maybe not tonight, but hope he did. The statistics that really show us, and when I was discussing this with the Nathan, I had gone home that night and took out the old phone, looked up Newsweek and found out they covered the entire country with the, with the schools throughout the entire country. By state, you can go to any state and get the number of the state. And some of the schools, that one of the, the, the what they had used at the time for a measurement was the um, percentage of students graduating from high school which go on to a, a, a forward school, which in today's world I think is even more important than before because you're hearing a lot of these jobs going away with in the future of robots and things of that nature, kids have to be skilled. So I think it's a very important question. 
Well, some of the schools were private schools initially, I saw which were in New York, and 100% of the kids went on to further education, graduate from college, whatever. Then it went all the way down the line, and a lot of private, you know, public schools in New York City and even in the, the tough areas of New York City had like an 80% jumping to it, then it went all the way down to whatever, and about the, the lowest is like 24%. New Hampshire was 24% of all total that we discussed, and we don't want all of that. Now, so with that being said, we, uh, you always want the quality of the prop education, and you always need to have a check. Where are you? Because if you don't know where you are, you don't, and you want to go someplace, you don't know what the difference between point A and point B. So I think that's knowledge that's important to know. And then I'm sure if you had that, you found it, you found out, well, we're gonna, here's a plane, how are we gonna get to the future? We're gonna do this and this and this, and you're gonna notch up slowly. It's not an overnight, no that's way in correct. the world. Now along with that, it then came to my question to myself, because you work with the your SA, 20, and you've got this, the three schools, 21, here. But when you feed into, when it cut it, and if your kids go all the way from kindergarten all the way to high school, but yet you're, you now have also, which is part of the question, you've also got Northampton, you've got Seabrook, and you've got Hampton Falls. So my leading question, do you get together with the other superintendents in reference to the quality of, the, because it's pretend Seabrook has students that are up at this level of knowledge with math. Usually it's math and English you go through, right? The right. typical measurements. Right, science. And, and you could have one, they come in and their students are way up here and another school is down here and another one's here and another one's here. Do you get together and look at that? Because you'd want to know the students come in that need that extra help because you could then have whatever they might be pretend they were from one particular school area, I don't know. You could then give them additional training in the summertime to bring them up. So that's one of the things I'm, I'm thinking of, like how do we do these things to ensure that everybody's gonna get a good quality education? So do you superintendents get to talk about that all as a question? So if, if, if you took a look at our goals, and you know these goals are defined with activities, and one of the things that our school board has been adamant about is the, in, is the relationship that we have with SAU 21. So as a superintendent of 90, I meet regularly with the superintendent from 21 and the assistant superintendent because she does curriculum. In addition to that, our teachers from Hampton meet with the teachers from Northampton, Hampton Falls, and Seabrook, and Winnicott and High School, the department chairs, and they get together quarterly, you know, because the time needs to be in the classroom, but they meet quarterly to discuss exactly what you're talking about. How are the kids doing? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What do we need to do in Hampton to ensure that our children are successful at Winnicott High School and beyond? So that has been in place now for quite a while. I, I, I think it's a good system and, and we work well together. How do you measure if between eighth graders there's about to go into, but you, you, you don't want to measure fourth graders because they're behind on math or whatever you want especially. How do you measure that and how do you measure that compared to between? Well, we, we, we do an annual assessment, a state assessment, and um, we look at the state assessment, but it isn't just getting a score, it's looking at the competencies. How do they do in, in each mm -hmm. competency? Science is one thing, but how do they do in life science, uh, earth science, uh, uh, you know, it's all, all of us. Right. So we dig down into the data, and there, there is data that we get from the assessments that tell our teachers, and it's our teachers who use this with their principals and myself, and we analyze where our kids' strengths and weaknesses are, and that's where the teachers focus on to bring those kids up. And I, 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 I sort of alluded to a softball because you want to know how Hampton's doing. Nathan and I did a presentation to our school board last uh, last spring, I believe, yep. and that's exactly what we did. We took Hampton and we compared Hampton to uh, other districts in the state and in, in, in compared same size, because we're larger than a lot of schools in and the when state. We, talked last we year, also we didn't do this. Is right. This new this we year? Also, it's new because I got new data. We also compared ourselves to uh, free and reduced. So, for instance, in Hampton, we have 20% of our kids are on free and reduced. Well, you have to look at Hampton Falls, it has 5%. Do you see what I'm saying? So you've got to understand that we're a little bit different than, uh, than the other towns. But when we took those measures of things like free and reduced, cost per pupil, 
Hampton spends about $15,000 per pupil on each student, okay? In other communities around us, the number is more like 23,000. So you say to yourself, well, how do we compare to those things? Because that's important, right? And in, in Which case means after case. Such as Exeter, Rye, exactly. Portsmouth, Portsmouth Rye, Exeter, uh, Stratum, and the Hamptons. And uh, time after time, the evidence will show that Hampton falls in the top 10. And that's our K 8 system. And, you know, that's the data that I have. Um, and uh, I, I, again, I have to attribute the work that our teachers do every day in the classroom that have created that kind of performance. And I always felt that this community was a strong, educationally sound uh, uh, supporter of, of the work that we do every day. And it shows. It shows. And I know I'm sitting here and I'm bragging, but it's, it, the data is there. You, you said Hampton Falls. You meant Hampton yes. is in the top ten. Hampton so. Falls Hampton. in the top ten. Was what she? Oh, okay. I lands. Hampton lands. lands. How about lands. the lands. 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 lands in the top Hampton ten? Lands Hampton lands in the top <laughs> ten. Word? Syntax. Syntax. Yeah. There you go. Syntax. Syntax. Any other questions? Syntax got back to us again. Any other questions? Well, did, would this? How does that, Nathan? When, when you and I had in our discussion last year, how does that work in relation to like twenty-four percent in reference to kids within Hampton go on to further education versus helping more get in that and going forward. Does that come into, now this start over here, what it sounds this year was a great start in my opinion. It's, it, it, it's great data and it was a great start. It's, it's, um, it's, tying, it's tying causally the, the data that we've got now to a measure that you talked about like a high school graduation pursuing four year college degree right. subsequently, uh, tying those together. And we don't, we don't generally in Hampton have Hampton, SU90, K8, we don't have the high school data and we can't necessarily make the causal link from these programs and this data to that. Um, but you're right, I mean, I think the work that, what you and I had spoken about, this kind of data, this kind of analysis is moving us in that direction to identify. This was, this was more comparative on the merits than it was qualitative in terms of this program or that, you know what I mean? There's two, two different, two kinds of analysis going on. This was a great comparison to say, okay, so we are performing successfully and we're doing well despite the fact that we have higher, greater social economic challenges in terms of poverty being measured by that free and reduced. Um, and we're performing well despite the fact that we have a smaller, uh, proportionately, um, not proportionately, we have a smaller uh, per pupil spending to deliver that same Quick kind of performance. question on that one. How does Hampton Academy fit into that? Isn't that one of our expenses when we just could, so how would you divvy that up? We're spending $28 million approximately for a brand new academy, which we need, I'm, right. you know, don't misinterpret. But the cost of the, even the buildings and maintenance and all these other things all add into the cost per student. Is that correct? Right. So they would do. that increase us this year? When we talk about that number in that the $15,000, $16,000 range, you, it's being spread over the entirety of the population, right? Right. As opposed to as opposed to just middle school students, um, and uh, well, and I'd have to go back and look because I'm, 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 yeah, it's a K eight figure, and I'm, um, and when we compare apples to apples, you know, the state numbers that we're using cleans out some some things, and I think some of the capital costs might go that way as well. Right. So to be fair, if we if we were all in, like folks do and you say take the total appropriation that was approved just divide by the headcount 15 or 16 isn't the same number but then if you look next door to somebody else 23 24 isn't the real number either so um, we could go back and do that on a really raw basis just take the budgets I don't have those numbers off the top of my head but but that would that would provide a, a better picture that way I mean just bring it to the next yeah we keep going with it keep going with it I right. think you and I having that chat last fall and going off whatever doing this I think it's, 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 and, and, and as you start going up it, it's it's marketing and also you're gonna go you're gonna get better you know the teachers want to get better and they have the things they can go to and they can do this and they do that more teachers want to work at the, the, the reason I brought up the magazine time magazine it's sad what's going on in part of the country, how they're treating their teachers. It is absolutely pathetic, was mine. And I know we're not like that, but if the article is important to know. Anything else, Dave? To read. Anything well you have to ask me? <laughs> Shoot it back at me. I don't know. <laughs> no, but we should, I mean, I think we can. Well, we uh, just one, one final comment. You know, you, you indicated that, 
you know, how do you use that data to improve? And that's exactly what we're doing. When we, when we look at the data and we see that um, this year there were five kids who didn't do as well as we expected in their assessments and in their teacher reviews, right, then we know there's an issue. And we are discovering that some of that issue is the, is the issues around the children's um, baggage, the, the trauma. The, the mental health things that they face impedes their learning. So we said, we, we, we know there's more to it than just kids coming in the classroom and sitting down and getting their cup full. There are other issues that impede learning. And so that's why we went after this mental health piece, the trauma, because then our teachers understand it better and can better um, uh, personalize the education I for the kids. I know my, my wife knows when we so we're going back to six <coughs> and a couple of teachers knowing with the Boston system and very difficult school systems and the father was in jail for murder, the mother was a prostitute, the brothers and sisters are, are on drugs and that kid's sitting there and that to me is such a tragedy because they're carrying all this baggage that you're saying and how do you get around that? And, and you want to get through that. Some you can get through to, and other ones you can't. I'm not the uh, psychiatrist here. But those now are coming to other okay. areas, and the opioid thing and all. So with this program you have is phenomenal. That's why That's social beautiful. emotional learning was so important to yeah, us. Absolutely. Okay, anyone else Thank have you. any other questions? No. Statements, whatever. Okay. Um, I, I do have something brief, I hope. And that is, uh, you're building. Uh, is going to include or not include it, that the studio, the TV studio? I know there was talk about doing a TV studio there. Yes. Uh, so the building does include a TV studio, right? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you for that. And uh, just so you know, to help you guys out with your academy, and, and you guys have helped the budget committee over the years in giving us uh, the cafeteria for our public hearings every January, right? We will not be asking that of you this year. So that will not be in your confusing mix of, of activities. We're going to be using this room uh, for that. So you can take that off your concern if it's there uh, on your list of concerns. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for coming in. Uh, and I'm sorry that we had a technical difficulty, Nathan. I don't know what the difficulty was, do you? Uh, I, I don't, but we had problems with we had problems with the system uh, at a board meeting last week. Last and, week, yeah. Um, right. And, at and this location? At this yeah. location. So we get that fixed. I, so we gotta get I, that fixed, yeah. I, I'd certainly be back here before I have to present again to try to make sure that we can figure it out and make it work. And I am humbled that you have last year's document. I, I'm not accustomed to <laughs> we appreciate putting Sorry. myself in that it's position. All be when, <laughs> we'll, we'll when you send, when you send us the I'll correct send, PDF. I'll send you the correct one. <laughs> okay. We'll use it as a baseline. <laughs> Thank you. And, and you know what? As always, Nathan and I are available. Call us. Come on over to the office. Dave has taken advantage of it. Steve has. All, all, many of you have. And um, we, we would encourage you to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank we'll you. see you in December at a date of your choosing. Just yeah, look at our schedule. Look on your schedule. website to see. Yeah, look at our schedule and pick one of yep. the dates that are open there for you. Thank you. I plugged you in, but it was just temporary. Yeah. The date okay. that I plugged That's you great. in. That's so. Thank you. Let Thank me you. know. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Uh, we've got new business, but you know, with new business is really kind of related to the old business because yeah. we talked about having these Saturday meetings. And you can see we have this technical difficulty yeah, here right. by having them here in addition to can we get access on a Saturday morning. So I think we have some real, I think we're going to have real challenges getting this thing pulled off, frankly. I do too. Maybe we should have Dave Moore host us at his house. Mm -hmm. that's, that's probably the best idea. Yeah. You think that's the best idea? Yeah. Lunch. So am I hearing coffee. a motion? Okay. Coffee, uh, lunch. Am I hearing a motion? No, it's uh, maybe even uh, if it runs into the afternoon, the you know the beer. Mm. And, uh, Am I hearing a motion? Wine. <laughs> uh, he no. does, but he's not even. On uh, my motion, adjourn, please. <laughs> yes. No, no. Am I hearing a motion on the Saturday thing? We have no, more I stuff was, to do. My with. motion was to adjourn. No, we're not dealing with that adjournment. Yeah. You asked the question is you can even get in here on Saturday. Well, that's the issue. In this well, Saturday know, that's issue, that's we right. have this technical problem. Before we problem. go setting up something, we can't. Saved by the lock. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. The vice chairman brought. Yeah, I know. That's the issue that, that we're trying to deal with earlier, but I didn't want to delay getting the SEU presentation, and, and we really need to resolve this. Thank uh, you.
I, I, I think it's basically, you know, going to be very problematic to make it happen. And uh, if, if we get an alternative site, because it seems to be an assistant to do it on a Saturday morning, which baffles me that we have to do it on a Saturday morning. But yeah, you, don't, you don't have to. But apparently there's some desire not to do it in the evening, apparently. I don't know why. There's others that perhaps desire not to do it at all. But so what is, what is the body's attitude in terms of doing this one? A Saturday morning, first of all. I won't be there. I have no interest. I, I can find other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> After you said you were interested. Well, mm. Saturday mornings can be complicated at times. Yeah. Well, well I cartoons understand. are on, you know, Saturday no. mornings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chasing my granddaughter around. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think it's a good idea. I just, I like, I think, like you said, is right. Semantics and logistics, I don't know if we're going to be able well, to. Well, ask the question. Maybe we can. Yeah, I think we ask the question. Someday when this building is open. Mr. Lapham. I don't, I have a little problem with it. I think we can get everything done we need to. Saturday morning is a problem. No. Yes. Look, yeah. Saturday morning yeah, has a problem. Yeah. So what I'm really hearing is, because you, 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 you found the training we did, or offered via the videos, and, and the thing we did in May, mm. sufficient for your needs, right, plus the booklet. I would agree with Brian. And, and Mr. Ladd agrees yeah. as well, I'm sure, and yeah, we've done I assume you years. do as well. Yeah. So, well, I'm just, <laughs> I'm trying to be, help, be helpful. But to Mr. Morrow, but I hear what your point. He's points. not in the room. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, what I'm thinking is, is that we have a finite number of people. Uh, it's, don't, it's like I may be bringing coffee and donuts to Dave's house. That's basically what we've narrowed down. Uh, pretty much what makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, logic would lead you there, yes? I understand that, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, so why don't we just say it well, right up front and save all this aggravation of organiz organizing things like basically won't likely We be should organized. probably tell our friend mm -hmm. Mr. Barr because the vote earlier, there was like four of us. Well, there was no vote. It was a discussion. So we're having it now. If we have to vote now, we will. Dave, what kind of coffee do you drink? <laughs> <laughs> it, seems, it seems the body Dave wants to, has acknowledged that you have this, this is a great desire to do this thing on Saturday morning, right? Saturday mornings, this, this uh, video. I was just time. using Saturday morning. It could be during the week. It was only, it, it's only okay. Can it be during the week at night? Huh? At, during the week at night? Oh, if during the week at night, we do this at during the week at night. What's the difference? <laughs> that, so that, it's, it's, it's whatever. If, first of all, you need to get all the people who are going to do it, and then you're going to ask the people to do it how they want to do it. All right, well, did yeah, that, right. that number, by the way, <laughs> dwindled. <laughs> not for me, but it dwindled. We just did that others. when you were in the, in the uh, men's room. So there, there's you and, and Brian, who's trying to be helpful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But won't find it useful other than being helpful. Is that <laughs> right? Bringing the coffee. No, bringing the coffee. All right, just being helpful. So the okay. bottom line is it's two. Is that what I'm hearing? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy the coffee, David. Then, then what the hell do you or do you care what day we have? And what night we have? We don't. I want to. I care because you guys want to put it on my to-do list and I want to take it off if that's the case well, so I mean I'm happy to take it I'm off. happy Dave to take to get the branch is ready for that motion I know. I'm okay I'm okay it's coming Dave. I'm okay Dave with taking a Saturday morning <laughs> and with Brian oh you want to come too and I, I will come down and, oh. and, and do the thing on Dave's TV okay and <laughs> the three of us can you know work out whatever problems or questions yeah. that may arise Fine is that me. is that acceptable yeah, I'm available at 6 a.m. I'm up. I'm <laughs> yeah. Well, I usually don't get to sleep until 3 a.m., so that's a great yeah. thing. <laughs> okay, I think so we'll settle that. So the three of us will we'll work it out. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and, and this is otherwise off the official to-do list. Uh -huh. We'll just work it out as three there individuals. There you go. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. We'll work it out. Now, our next meeting is, uh, oh, by the way, anyone else with any new business? Thank you, no. <laughs> uh, our next meeting is... October 16. Yes. I look forward to seeing you all at that time. And we are adjourned. Thank Second. You. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Done. Aye. Thank you, Channel.